course, I had to have the most dramatic entrance with the table. I've been sitting here all afternoon and have watched a number of you on your phones and taking pictures, maybe selfies. We all love to take instant pictures with digital cameras these days. Um, we can check and make sure our hair is right or our eyes are not closed or our duck lips are just perfect. But there's something unique and decidedly retro about an actual photograph. Uh, most of you are too young to uh, remember this, but back in the old days, there was this stuff called film, and you put it in the camera, and you took a photograph, and you didn't have a clue what the photograph looked like. When you were finished with the roll, you rewound it, you sent it off somewhere, they developed it and you got it back maybe a, maybe a week later. And you could see that your eyes were closed, your hair was messed up, and your duck lips were not perfect in every photograph. Until Polaroid created the instant camera. This is what they looked like when I was your age. I don't even know if this works, but we're gonna try it. No, it doesn't work, which is why I brought a backup. This is a newer version of a Polaroid, and I think this one does work. So, Nelia, I'm going to turn the tables on you. And I can't get this one to work either. There it goes. So it's taken an instant photograph. But what I want to talk to you about is how life, your life and your story, is not instant. Rather, life takes a little bit of developing. So let me tell you a little bit about me. Uh, I grew up on a family farm about 90 miles north of here in Dyer County, Tennessee. Uh, my mother and my grandmother were both teachers. My dad worked in an industrial plant in Dyersburg. My grandfather was a tractor mechanic. When I was 14 or 15 years old, my mother demanded that I get a job. Not quite sure why she thought I should get a job when I was only 14 or 15, but you do what your mother tells you to do. She helped me find the job, though, and the job that I got was in a law firm in Dyersburg. So I made their coffee, I made their copies, I sent faxes, that was before email, um, and I walked papers back and forth to the courthouse because I wasn't old enough to drive yet. I had no lawyers in my family at all. I don't even think I knew a lawyer until I started working at this law firm. The folks at the law firm were really my first introduction to, um, to the law. My high school also had a mock trial team. I don't know if Arlington has a mock trial team or not, but my high school had a mock trial team, and I, my recollection is that my mother asked me to uh, join that team, and I did as I was told. <laughs> Um, I went to Mississippi State College where I majored in ag business. I know that sounds a lot like pre-law or political science, doesn't it? It had nothing to do with um, law. My mother thought I would be a lawyer when I grew up. I wasn't so sure. So majoring in agriculture was sort of my rebellion, I guess you can say. I got my bachelor's degree and my master's degree in ag business. Uh, before deciding that mother was right, and mothers usually are right. So after I got my master's degree, I went out to Dallas, Texas, and went to law school. Um, I practiced law out there for a little bit, and then I decided to move home to practice law in Jackson. What I want to talk to you about, though, is that the Polaroid of my life developed as the result of a few negatives. So you remember me telling you about the role of film in old-timey cameras? Well, when you would get those photographs back, you would get the negatives back as well. So an instant 
photo is a lot like that negative. Polaroid photos are created when a negative is displayed inside the camera. It's pressed between a set of rollers, which is why it comes out either the front or the top of the camera, depending on the camera. But when it's pressed and applied, there's some pressure applied to it, there's a chemical agent, a chemical reagent, a change that takes place that will transfer that negative to a positive receiving sheet. And that's when you get the photograph. So the chemical change comes about as a result of the negative meeting the positive and as the result of the pressure of the rollers. We can draw some parallels between the creation of an instant photograph and the creation of your own story and I want to share a few of my negatives in order for you to understand what I'm talking about. When I was on that high school mock trial team, my coach told me that um, I wasn't good enough to be a lawyer. What my teenage brain heard was that I couldn't be a lawyer. Now that's not what he said, but that's what I heard. So I was a witness. Now when I look back on that, I recognize that he knew some of my other students, some of my teammates, were much better at thinking on their feet than I was. And they would do a better job. And in reality, those people who got assigned those roles ultimately went to law school and are now accomplished attorneys. But that, I, you aren't good enough to be a lawyer, is part of the reason I went to college and didn't major in pre-law. And I didn't major in political science because I took what he said as truth, when in reality, it wasn't the truth. But that negative, combined with a change agent, like in that instant photograph, and that change agent was my mother's pressure, created a positive result for me. After I had been practicing law here in Tennessee for a few years, I was nominated to I was nominated to apply for a leadership program that the Tennessee Bar Association puts on. The Tennessee Bar Association is the statewide um, group of lawyers. So I filled out my application um, and I was rejected. They sent me a very kind letter that said, no, thank you. Well, after I got over my disappointment and to be perfectly honest, uh, mild anger, I looked at my application and I suddenly realized why they had said no. The reason they said no is because all I did was work. That's all I did. I didn't contribute to my community and I wasn't advocating for our profession or trying to make our profession any better. I was flat. I was not well-rounded. I just worked. So it was a good wake-up call. I was able to take that rejection, realize that I needed to change some things. So I found some causes that I cared about, I found some things that played to my strengths, and I got involved in some things, both in my community and in my profession. I swore I would never apply again. A few years later, a dear friend called and said, please apply, please apply. So I did and I got into that program, probably because of the changes I had made. That change and that rejection was one of the best professional events of my life because it completely changed my trajectory and what I was able to do. So the rejection turned into a really good experience. After I had been practicing law for a number of years, uh, one of those lawyers I worked for when I was 14 or 15 called me and told me that one of the judges on the Tennessee Court of Appeals had decided to retire. And he thought I should apply. After telling him all the reasons I didn't think I should apply, 
I filled out the application. It's about a 15-page application. You pour your life and your soul into these pieces of paper that are available on the internet forever. Then you appear in front of this group of 15 people who ask you all kinds of questions, uh, including things like, are you sure you're old enough to do this job? And they pick three names of the, of the group that applies. They pick three names to send to the governor's office. I was one of the three names that was selected, along with two judges from Shelby County who were extraordinarily well qualified. So I get to go to Nashville, get a parking spot at the Capitol. I get to interview with the governor's lawyers and then spend 30 minutes in the governor's office just sitting and chatting with him about my work experience and my education. I can promise you that my high school mock trial self never saw that coming. It was a wonderful experience, but completely unexpected. About six weeks later, I got the phone call that the governor had decided to appoint one of the other two uh, applicants to the job. Rejection. A week or so later, that same lawyer that I had dealt with when I was 15 called me and said, there's another judge who's decided he also is going to retire. You have a second chance. I had to think about it for a little while because rejection sometimes stings. But I decided to apply. Same process, 15 people answering questions. I was one of the three names selected, went again to the governor's office, wondered what they could ask me this time that they didn't ask me the last time. They came up with a few questions. Uh, spent some time with the governor's lawyers, spent some time with the governor again. That time, the day after Christmas, 2013, I got a phone call as I was driving down I-40 that the governor had decided to appoint me to the Tennessee Court of Appeals. That experience over the last two and a half years now has been one of the biggest joys of my life to serve this state in a way that I feel I'm uniquely qualified to do it. I would have missed out on that joy if I had taken that rejection to heart and had not reapplied. So my story is a lot like this Polaroid. Uh, yours will be as well. Our stories, they're a process, much like there's a process to the creation of a Polaroid picture. Is there something you'd like to do? Having that thought is the first thing. So that's the first thing to do, is have some thought of what you wanna do. The second thing you've gotta do is you've got to actually do something. You can't just sit around and think about it. If you sit around and think about it, you probably are going to think it to death. Do you think anybody who went skydiving spent a lot of time thinking about whether it was something they wanted to do? No, they just got out there and they did it. Maybe when you do something, you'll be successful. Maybe you won't. And that's where the last thing comes into play. You've got to be willing, if you're not successful, to change something or you might just have to wait and you might have to be patient. A Polaroid doesn't de develop instantly. You have to wait a little while. Sometimes people think if they shake it, it'll develop faster. Sometimes you just have to wait for the color of your story to be displayed. Do what has to be done, but wait when you need to. Sometimes you'll get knocked down or you'll get told no. Um, I could have decided not to apply for the Court of Appeals again. I could have gotten disappointed and quit. But failure really is an opportunity to create something wonderful. It's an opportunity to take that negative, apply some kind of change agent, and let the negative be passed into a positive. As much as you've got to change the way you look at the negatives in your life, you've also got to be willing to have your eyes open to the change agents that are all around you. For a Polaroid, it's a chemical that's there that helps transfer that negative to a positive. In my life, it's been a variety of things. Number one, it's been people. 
My mother was a huge change agent for me because she knew when to push me and how to push me. She's the one who continued to push me toward law because she saw in me something that she knew in her wisdom would fit. The people at the law firm that I worked for when I was 15 years old, they were change agents too. They mentored me for years. And then when an opportunity came my way, they were there to help me and support me, although it had been 20 years since I had last worked for them. Finally, be willing to listen to someone tell you the truth, even when it's something you don't necessarily want to hear. Every time I've been told I was wrong, and that's pretty often, um, I've grown in some way. You've got to be willing to be uncomfortable in order to grow. Don't surround yourself with yes men or women who only tell you how great you are and how wonderful you are. Make sure that you are surrounding yourself with people who support you, but also with people who will challenge you. I have the benefit of perspective. I know what the last 25 years of my development has resulted in. You're probably sitting there still wondering, what does the next 25 years hold for me? You may be wondering what the next five years hold for you. As your story begins to develop, remember that perceived negatives in your life can combine with a change agent and really create something wonderful. And when you look back on the Polaroid that you created, I hope you'll see that your story is a masterpiece. Thank you.